Okay, well, let's start. Good morning. This is remedial security for those of you that are in the wrong spot. Jason's laughing. That's good. At least there's one or two people that are awake this morning. All right. First of all, we've got to answer three fundamental questions during this presentation. <laughs> Who schedules a security conference on a Saturday? Is, is Chunky Dave even in here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait. It gets better. On my anniversary, no less. Okay. Those of you that uh, remember the early Utah Saint days, anybody know the story about my anniversary in Utah Saint? Would you like to have my wife come up and talk about it? She doesn't want to, so I won't make her. But she's in the back, by the way. My wife is here. Raise your hand. That's my wife, Kimberly. And all that crazy noises you heard from the north uh, east side of the building, that was us. It's anniversary weekend for us. I'm just teasing. That's probably way more than you cared about. Okay, so we're on our anniversary, and then some guy says, hey, you got to talk at B-Sides. It's this guy right here. And so if you haven't had an opportunity to talk to him as one conference organizer to another, sometimes you don't realize how hard it is to run a conference. So congratulations. It seems like it's going off without a hitch. So thumbs up. So that's Chunky Dave. Um, this is about me. I'm going to tell you some of the same information, but tell some deeper stories about it. We're going to talk about me for like 30 minutes. Just teasing. All right, so I'm Troy Jessup. Um, I am a CISSP, an SSCP, a CCNA, a TPYMWIA, and a firm subscriber of the Who Cares About Certifications uh, certification. Um, my current roles, uh, I'm the organizer of the Utah Saint organization, uh, the founder and chairman, chief researcher, organiz organizator, that's a good word, of St. Con. I might need a drink. Where'd, where'd they go? Just tease. Okay, um, I, I work currently at the Utah Education Network, and I've been there for a long time uh, doing associate director of security and operations junk. Uh, I also run a little uh, business on the side, which we call Brush Fire Security, which we do some security consulting and some other things from time to time. A lot of people have asked me about what the heck is Jupiter. Most people in the Utah Saint organization which is where most of you come from, don't know me as Jupiter. This name precedes Utah Saint um, or coincides with it to a large degree. This is the, the, uh, the handle that I used to use when we were doing the capture the flag competitions at uh, DEF CON. So as we were doing those, I was Jupiter and all of the other people in the, in the group were different planets and nobody was Uranus I, at all, okay? So anyways, that's me. Hopefully most of you know who I am and I don't need to go into any more details. Wanted to just talk about <clears throat> network fundamentals or network security fundamentals. But I also wanted to give a quick plug. This will be the only real plug for St. Con uh, during this presentation. Uh, St. Con is a network security conference. How many of you don't know what St. Con is? Let's just pull the room. Okay, next slide. <laughs> okay, security fundamentals. Um, and when I kind of joked about it being remedial, I kind of meant it a little bit. So here's what, here's what you get uh, for security fundamentals. Head plus wall plus momentum equals ouch, right? You guys ever beat your head up against a wall before physically, like in real life? Maybe, probably as a kid or something. Well, this is what security seems to be like, right? Now this isn't the head beating up against the wall thing and I have to kind of look at it from behind here, but it's a cute little animation of somebody just kind of taking the beating because somebody else knows so much better how to do things, right? How many of you guys feel like the guy on the, the left, sorry, um, and you're always just tearing it up, doing really good security stuff, and you're just pwning all those hackers out there? Okay, and then how many of you guys feel like the guy on the right who's just getting pwned all the time and you just don't even care anymore, <laughs> right? So let's start out here. Let's talk about people, okay? Security-minded people. One of the first fundamentals that we're going to talk about is being a security-minded security geek, okay? What kind of security resources do you need in today's day and age, okay? Found this picture on the internet, looked cool, okay? So who's the fat guy? Doesn't matter, right? But they're the Ghostbusters. 
right? What kind of security staff do you need? You've got, how many of you guys work in an organization that has a formally defined network security office, department, or otherwise? Okay, what do the rest of you guys do? You fight security from the IT department, don't you? Yeah, okay, that, that's right. Okay, so, but for the purpose of this slide, what I wanted to do is just bring up the, the, the point that uh, for security, for, for your security group, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, only because, hold on, my phone keeps buzzing in my pocket. Somebody's sending me illicit messages. No, it's not. But somebody wants that picture, so. Anyway. Yeah, I'll send, I'll send out a link afterwards or something for it. Somebody evidently knows my phone number. <laughs> okay, so security geeks. We all need to have security geeks, but the security-minded person doesn't stop there. One of the things that I want to talk about is that you also need security-minded system administrators, DBAs, other things like that, right? It's a security fundamental. If you're doing security in an organization and you're the person in charge of security, whether that be through divine intervention or edict, right? Or whether, it because, or whether it's because you decided that, hey, I'm interested in this stuff and I'm gonna work on it, or whether you don't really care and you're here because you heard about this really cool con. Um, you need good security-minded people. So let's talk about them for a minute. Security is a state of mind. How many believe that? Okay, it is, it's truly a state of mind. It starts with this, ignorance. The bliss of not knowing or not wanting to know. How many of you guys fit, your, fit yourself into this category right here? I mean, legitimately, like, hey, you know what? Ignorance is bliss. My wife's raising her hand in the back, okay? So ignorance is bliss. We don't care. Do we know if the hackers got into our main database servers? Do we, do we care, right? Well, first of all, ignorance is not bliss. And for those of you that don't, un don't understand the, the not sign in there, not equal to, okay? Then we'll talk about programming and how important that is a little bit later. Okay, so the next level of a security state of mind as we go through this progression. So we have the ignorance, and ignorance is bliss useful, users or people. And then we have the, ins the insightful people. So they have a basic understanding of what is out there and what to watch out for to keep themselves safe. Okay, how many of you guys fit into this category? Okay, so you're aware that you know people from Nigeria send you an email and you know those basic things that have been around since the dawn of time that might have finally made it to your ears. I don't mean that to sound derogatory at all, but um, but being insightful. Okay, most users in the computer industry these days fit into this category. They're the ins they, they know not to click on things in emails. They know that antivirus is a good thing. They don't know why, but it's a good thing. Um, and the, and the, they know that they have to VPN in to get to all their stuff at their office, and they hate you for it. Okay, then comes this level, the educated version, or the educated people. Okay, uh, knowing enough to be able to speak out about it, but lacking some practicality. Okay, how many fit into this category? Okay, so a lot of the presenters up here probably consider themselves to be educated. They're probably a little bit farther down the scale here as we go down it, but um, educated. Um, I consider myself to be pretty well educated in network security. It's some, something that I've been doing for a long time. Um, I can speak about it. I can stand up here and tell you about security fundamentals, get really boring with some stupid slides like this, watch James say, hey, why is one side of the screen brighter than the other? It's okay, James, it's okay. It's, it's, all OC, it's OCD for all of us. Okay, so educated. Next one, scared, okay? How many of you are to this level? Okay, hopefully, we're, you know, we're kind of going through the scale here. How many are scared about network security? Because at this point, you know, with real understanding about network security comes real fear. Um, once you realize uh, that your fear is actually warranted, I mean, as you go throughout your day and you're, you're whipping out your swords, and you're embattled with the miscreants out there in the world, uh, it's a real battle. It's constantly waging. There's not a time anywhere 
day or night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 and a quarter days a year, that you're not being bombarded on your networks or on your systems, looking for holes, vulnerabilities, and other things to get in, get your information, take it out, and, and do, things, do things with it. So a lot of us are in that scared mindset, right? Okay, keep going. There's a couple more. There's the paranoid, okay? Now, you guys might be multiple parts of these, right? So how many of you are paranoid about security? Okay, this is the sweet spot, okay? On this entire scale, this is the sweet spot. This is where you wanna be, you wanna be paranoid. So this is where I consider myself to be, as paranoid. Um, this is a healthy place, believe it or not. I mean, paranoia in general isn't healthy, but for security purposes, it is. Um, but paranoia for security people is healthy. Uh, for you and for the organization that you're protecting. So security mindset, paranoia, okay? And then insanity, okay? Now you've gone off the deep end. Now you've unplugged yourself from the internet. Um, <laughs> you've decided that, okay, this isn't even worth it anymore. Um, but there is a fine line between uh, paranoia and sanity. Um, don't let the insanity take you. Okay, insanity, I've got another one of these things. When you put two equal signs together in programming language, that means what? Equal to, okay, just making sure that you, this wasn't just, oof. I'm sure it's not. But insanity equals worry. If you worry too much, um, you're going to do things like have knee-jerk reactions to issues, incidents, and other things that happen on your networks, and you're not gonna make good, good decisions. So worrying about every little thing that you cannot get to um, but knowing, um, let's see, but you know makes you vulnerable. Who cares? I, I probably was tired when I wrote that slide. Okay, so here's this completely meaningless scale that shows all of those uh, um, mindsets from ignorance through educated through scared, paranoid, and insane. It's okay. It doesn't, I don't even know what the graph represents. I thought I'd, it would be a really cool visual. But uh, most people hang out in ignorance mode. Uh, a couple people are well-educated, a few more uh, fit into the scared, and it's very interesting that there's not very many that are paranoid. In fact, when we even raised our hand, how many of you are paranoid? Now you're all going to raise your hands like, yeah, we're going to sc screw up your scale. Okay, but fundamental number one, okay, so we've kind of prefaced it with this, is having good, paranoid, security-minded people. But that also that but that means having those types of people in every aspect of your technology uh, within your organization. That doesn't mean just having security people in the security department. Why do, why is it important? This can be a little interactive. Why is it important to make sure that you have a good security-minded system administrator? Anyone? So to quote him, to, because the dingbat would leave the stupid default settings on the piece of junk server, right? I, that was a direct quote. Okay, right. If you don't have security-minded system administrators or security-minded DBAs and security-minded accounting people, what's going to happen? They're going to circumvent all of the protections that you put in place by opening up Telnet on some stupid server and saying, hey, I'll just get to it from home from time to time uh, so that I can work from home, right? Okay, so let's talk about fundamental number two. Okay, tools and monitoring. <clears throat> Excuse me. So tools. Um, how many of you guys would say you have a really good subset of tools to help you monitor and manage network security? Okay, a couple of handshakers out there, right? So what are the rest of you guys doing? You're blissfully ignorant <laughs> of, of what's going on? Okay, well, so let's talk about it a little bit. Tools, specifically in the security industry, are there to make your jobs easier, to make processes for managing security easier. And so some of the essential tools, I'm not gonna put a lot of names uh, to these uh, because there's a lot of sponsors outside that would be happy to talk about many of these solutions with you uh, under different names. But let's talk about some of the fundamentals, okay? Do you guys have network traffic monitors within your network? Are you monitoring traffic? Do you have the ability to pull a packet capture off the wire if you needed to? Do you have the ability to see that, hey, all of a sudden I went from two megabits a second, which hopefully maybe you have more traffic than that, but whatever, two megabits a second to all of a sudden I'm doing 200 megabits a second and we have no idea why. Right? How many of you would notice something like that? 
Raise your hand. So all of a sudden your network traffic went whoop. How many of you guys would notice that? Okay, that's good. What would the rest of you guys do? Be blissfully ignorant? That's, I, I don't mean to beat you up. That's not my point here. Okay, but network traffic monitors. Okay, I'll talk about a few of those here in a minute. Log management systems. Okay, how many of you have a log management system? What are they good for? Somebody yell it out. Your log. Uh, nice job. Woo! -hoo. I bet that took. Never mind. <laughs> log management system, right? What kind of logs are you sending to your log management system? Maybe let me ask it like that. Okay, firewall logs. Those are good ones. Anything else? System logs, event logs. Anybody else? Authentication logs, failures. Okay, there's a lot of things that you can send to a log management server. Why, why would you do that? Central repository. There's another word that starts with a V that I'm looking for here. Everybody's like, oh, what? No, wait, wait, wait. Visibility, right? The visibility of those logs. Now, if they sit there on a system, so if you've got this beautiful Active Directory system, authentication across the entire organization, this is a beautiful thing, and then nobody ever looks at the logs because they're just stored on the server and nobody really gets on there to take a look at them, how good is your Active Directory implementation when it comes to security and authentication and things like that, right? Okay, so visibility, having a central log repository and the, the ability to see those, map those out, uh, is incredibly important, uh, and it's a fundamental. Okay, so vulnerability scanning tools. How many of you guys do vulnerability scans against your network? We should probably see a lot of hands at this point, which is good because a couple of years ago, you probably would have seen no hands because everyone's like, what is that? Um, vulnerability scanning tools. Okay, there's a number of them out there. Uh, you can pay for really great ones. Uh, you can open source some really good ones as well. Um, and being able to identify and manage the vulnerabilities on your network is a key fundamental tool. Okay, firewalling and filtering systems. Okay, pretty straightforward. I'm not going to get into that. If you have, pro if you need information about firewalling, is that me buzzing? If you need information about firewalling, uh, you can come up later, and we'll do a remedial remedial class. Uh, fault management processes, okay, or fault management systems. Uh, what's a fault management system? First and foremost, up down, right? The little red light, green light kinds of things. Whether something's working or not, okay. A fault management system. We mostly tie that into operations and seeing whether a system is working and running. But why is it an important security tool? The buzz is deafening. You find out your log management system's down. There you go. <laughs> okay, but no, the, the, the fault management system is there so that, hey, it's an anomaly. What, why did such and such system go offline? Why is the database down right now? Could it be that be through the web server, somebody did some SQL injection that in, tried to dump the entire database 300 times just to see if they could, right? How many of you guys would have seen, or, or if you're watching your fault management system and you see your database server go offline, how many of you guys immediately jump to, okay, who tried to dump the database through the web server? How many of you guys would jump to that conclusion? Those of you that raised your hands during paranoid should be raising your hands, right? Okay, because it's a paranoia sort of thing, but a fault management system helps you see those types of things. And then policies and procedures, you know, boring stuff. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of tools in a very non-vendor specific sort of way for the most part. Um, there's a lot of different tools out there. You guys are welcome to take a picture of this slide. These are some of the ones that you should probably be incorporating into your uh, networks uh, as part of just basic fundamentals. Uh, included in here are things like the ability to pull NetFlow, which I highlighted up in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, NetFlow is an incredible source of information. We use that all of the time, okay? NetFlow is the ability for you to pull packet header data and store it for long-term use and analytics uh, on your network. How many of you are not familiar with NetFlow? Okay, I'll, th I'll throw out a little teaser. Uh, at the 801 Labs um, Hackerspace, we teach NetFlow classes about once every two months or so. If you wanna come out and find out the cool parts and what's involved in NetFlow, come out and see us uh, out there at the Hackerspace. There's some really cool things about it. But 
what would, what would it be like if you had a log of every single packet that came in and out of your network and the ability to run different analytics on those logs? You could start seeing patterns fairly quickly like, hey, how many times a day do I get port scanned? How many times did this guy try and brute force into my Bastion SSH host that gets into the back end of our network? How many times did somebody try and knock on the ports for our databases, et cetera, et cetera? Those types of things you find in NetFlow. And there's a ton of other tools on there. Okay, I'll, I'll mention just a few as we go through. Um, SNMP Walk, uh, the ability to pull SNMP data and, and do analytics on that, incredibly cool. Splunk, I said vendor non-specific, but there's a couple of them on here. Splunk, great log management system. Hella expensive, but great log management system. Um, Nagios is a great fault management system. When your database goes down and you want to be paranoid like me and say, hey, who tried to dump it from the web server? Nagios is a great tool to find out whether your database is up or down. A um, number of other tools in there. Uh, Jeremy did a great job just a few minutes ago talking a little bit about Wireshark and packet capturing. Those things are on there. Nessus is also highlighted. Again, a little bit more vendor specific, but it's open source-ish. Um, how many of you guys have Nessus? Okay, very cool tool. If you're not using that and don't scan your networks on a regular basis, um, you're doing it wrong. Um, Plain, plain and simple. Um, firewalls, it's probably the biggest on the screen, highlighted. And I wanted to just kind of mention a couple of things because uh, this is the remedial part of security fundamentals. Um, a firewall, having one in place does not end your responsibility for security, okay? There are so many people out there, especially in smaller organizations and such that say, hey, we've got a firewall, we're good. Um, Firewalls are just the beginning. That just offers you the opportunity and the ability to then start doing things within your network and containing stuff. So having a firewall is good, um, but the rest of it, once you have a firewall and a couple of these other things in place, this is what, uh, hopefully that's animated. It is animated, that's cool. So this is what your network may look like. This is the, a slide from the, um, from the movie Up, and you see the little grandpa dude standing on the edge, looking over the edge. This is symbolic. I'm, exp I'm about to explain the symbology here. Symbolic, whatever. But you're looking off this huge precipice. You've got a couple of tools in place, but look at all the stuff that keeps coming in and keeps trying to hit what, what it is you're doing. Do you want me to move around more? I can... No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> okay, so... Fundamental number two is having good, effective security tools, okay? So that you have visibility into the things that you're protecting. Hopefully that's helpful. Let's talk about baselines and scope. So this one's a short section, doesn't have any animated slides. Um, scope, uh, how many of you are responsible for security within your organization? Okay. Keep your hands up for just a second. What does security mean? Okay, is it just you're responsible for security or are you responsible for the security management, firewalls? You know, is there something defined around it? That's why there's quotes around this. Okay, are you responsible for security or are you responsible for security? Okay, which is it? So think about it. I don't need the, the, the answer specifically from you. Um, is what you're charged with protecting defined? Okay, this is another security fundamental. Okay, here's this cute slide. I, I see people laughing. I mean, that's cool. What's she laughing about? What's so funny? Defined. Define. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad you're laughing at the same. Yes. But the thing is, is so often um, the, the trouble that we run into is that security is defined as security with quotes around it. And that the responsibility, or the person who has the responsibility for security is responsible for everything from soup to nuts. Let's just use one of those crazy terms. Okay, the, the you are here thing, I don't know why I put that in there, but let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about, about it being defined. Defining network security within your organization is a fundamental, okay? So you as the person in charge of network security for your organization needs to have it defined. Uh, generally, that goes through a process of, hey, here is the scope of what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to make sure that the firewall is in place and it's properly filtering the bad things out on the internet. I'm going to make sure that antivirus is in place on the inside and so many other things, right? But it also is helpful to make sure that they understand that I am not the system administrator and responsible for applying patches to the systems. I am not the person who is responsible for managing the programmers depart or the programming department over here to make sure that they do and they build secure code. Or maybe you are and that's your job, but define it. Okay? So it's not just security. Because what happens when it's just security? Somebody yell it out. It's too much, right? Their, their security is way too big these days to just define it with a couple of quotes anymore. Okay? So the you are here thing uh, is a little bit more precursor to baselines. Okay? How many of you guys have done any one of the three of these things in the last year? Okay, that's actually really good. So um, a risk assessment, okay? having somebody come in and help you define what is the risk that you have within your organization? What are, what are the things that you need to be protecting? What are the problems that they see? A vulnerability assessment. Hopefully, to one degree or another, you guys are doing most of this on your own. Vulnerability assessment is a self-assessment kind of thing. Having somebody come do it externally from time to time is a good idea and it's something that's necessary so that, that you don't get stuck in the rut of, hey, it's that way because it needs to be kind of thing. I, I know that as security geeks, we always do. It's like, oh, that's just Bob's stuff and it's behind the firewall and I've locked it down as best as possible and we just kind of ignore it and we get into that ignore it kind of mentality. Um, so having somebody come do this from an external perspective is important. Penetration testing, how many of you guys have had that? I mean, I know we raised our hand for all three, but how many have had a pen test in the last year? That's actually really cool to see that there's that many. A penetration test, actually having either yourselves, if you have the skill sets to do it, or somebody else come in and actually beat up your network, bloody your nose a little bit, and try and find, here's how we got into your network and, and what we did to get there. Um, and you would be surprised how effective having this information from time to time um, helps you. It's a security fundamental. You need to test yourselves. Okay? It needs to be part of what you're doing. And then as it, as it applies to baselines, you need to do all of this stuff to then find out where are we so that you can then make plans for where you're going, okay? Which is the end of fundamental number three. Know where you are and where you're, where you're going, okay? How bad is it and what are you protecting is really what we're trying to get out of this. Okay, let's talk about methodologies uh, for a minute. Um, methodologies, we'll call it a game plan, okay? comes in all shapes, colors, X's and O's, um, things like that. Okay, so here's a couple of the different methodologies um, that we play around with in, in my industry, where we're at. Um, the NIST SP800 series, okay, there's a whole series of things in there. There's actually 171 different sub-series or sub-sections to that um, methodology, um, which is a security methodology for how to implement all sorts of different things uh, within your network. How to implement a penetration testing um, regimen. How to configure your firewall. How to do hardening of your systems and services. All sorts of things are, are wrapped into that. It's probably the premier network security methodology. How many of you guys have heard of the NIST SP800 stuff before? Okay, so a pretty fair amount. That's great. For the rest of you that haven't, this, re this will require a little bit of research. There's a lot there, but it's another security fundamental. You need to understand what it means to have a holistic security program, okay? What you're doing within your organization. If you want NIST SP800 light, there's something called the SANS 20 critical controls. So it kind of narrows the 171 down to about 20, which includes most of the same things, just a little bit less broad. Um, you might want to start there, but Having a game plan, working through, understanding what it is you need to be doing uh, is important. Security control number one within the SANS 20 is understanding what it is that you have on your network and how to protect it, right? And then number, control number two is understanding the software running on all of that cool hardware and how to protect it. And it just goes on and on. There's a lot of information in there. Uh, the OSSTMM, that's somewhere 
crazy acronym I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but it's the Open Source Something Testing Methodology Manual, um, which is a penetration testing and, and uh, vulnerability assessment methodology. How's it going, Dimitri? Okay, so fundamental number four is having a plan and making it work for you. So a security methodology is required. How many of you guys have a security strategic plan within your organization? Okay, to one degree or another. The rest of you might want to start reviewing some of these and build a plan around it, um, making sure that you're, you're doing that. Okay, so a couple of the basics since we've covered all of the hard stuff. And we're almost done, by the way. You're going to get out early because uh, I'm going to go enjoy my anniversary with my wife the rest of the day today. Um, the basics. Um, this is all the crap you have to know. Okay, first of all, you need to be able to know how to jump rope. Okay, this is mandatory. It's a security fundamental. Okay, as soon as you've seen that enough, we'll move on to the next slide. It was just one of those dumb little animation things. Okay, you need to be able to do most of these things. Okay, as a, as a security geek, and there's a whole lot more to this, but if you are not strong in a couple of these areas, uh, you need to become strong in these areas. In today's day and age, with the malware the way that it is, you need to understand how to reverse engineer malware. How many of you guys have that skill? Okay, there's probably a couple of you. Okay, how many of you guys would love to learn that? Okay, awesome. We'll probably teach some of that at CENTCON this year. But one of the other things is that, again, a little plug for the 801 uh, Labs hackerspace, they teach reverse engineering classes on a weekly basis over there. If you want to come down there and learn about reverse engineering malware, they teach that. Okay, um, port scanning. How many of you guys know how to do that? Hopefully most of the hands go up, okay. Uh, decoding IP traffic. How many of you guys could take a packet capture and completely understand what's going on? Okay, a few of you. There's a couple of hands out here like this, great, okay. Um, having those types of skill sets is important because you've got to be able to understand when, when, when an incident happens, um, you've got to be able to make the determination, did they get something? Did they not get something? Because in today's day and age, again, we're getting compromised all of the time through one means or another. Having the ability to actually decode that traffic and understand it is important. How about systems administration? How many of you guys have to be good system admins to be a good security guy? Hopefully all of you are gonna raise your hands because of course you have to. Um, understanding how system administration works is important. Uh, because you're going to be the person to, to recommend how to patch, when to patch. What big patch came out just the other day? Most of the Utah Saint folks just should know because we made a big deal out of it. OpenSSL, okay. There's a couple of high priority patches in OpenSSL um, that if you're not patching for, you're vulnerable. Uh, remember Heartbleed? This doesn't quite raise to the scale of Heartbleed, but it's pretty close. Um, and such, but system administration, the reason why I bring up the, hard, the, the open SSL patches is those are patches that should have been installed already on your systems. How many of you guys have patched for those already? Okay, there's like a couple people. Okay, why not? Why, why have we not patched for those yet? I'm not gonna make you answer the question, uh, but having that systems administration understanding, knowing when it's safe to upgrade uh, and patch when it's not, how the databases are going to be impacted. Those are things that you need to know so that you can be effective on how you're administer, administering security. Database structure and syntax. How many of you guys could just go to town inside of a MySQL database or a Postgres database and just navigate yourselves around command line mode? Okay, a couple of hands went up. There's a couple strong kung fu people in here, right? Um, but understanding that structure, why is it important? It's chirp, 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 chirp. So when somebody's doing SQL injection on your web server, you could determine, hey, what is it that they're doing? Then you could probably do it yourself because you know all the commands to, in order to grab that information, right? Okay, a um, couple of last items here. A programming language or a scripting language. I can't beat on this one enough. Um, being an effective security person and it's a fundamental, but being an effective security person requires that you be able to script or program. Um, if you're not good at scripting and programming, 
this is one of the things that you should work on almost first more than anything else. Because without this, your ability to analyze data, fix things in a hurry, um, write a script to process a specific uh, type of information to get an understanding of what's going on in one scenario or another uh, can't happen. And it's, so it is, it's one of the most important things we do. I, we're constantly writing scripts at UEN. We're constantly writing programs to analyze data or to beat up against some system to determine whether it's vulnerable or not or to brute force and, and things like that. If you use this, this, all of the scripts and tools that are out there to the script kitty uh, world, those are good, but you can't customize those very easily without understanding a programming language. So, so learn one, one of those, okay? And then lastly, uh, for this section, is a way to learn more um, as things change. So how many of you are subscribed to some sort of information push, uh, either mailing lists or, or whatever, that you're learning about the latest trends, tactics, and information about what's going on out there? Okay, hopefully most of you are. If, there, if you're not, there's a lot of really good ones out there. Um, I'll plug the Utah Saint organization. We don't send out a ton of information, but we do send out some, some good information from time to time um, about different threats and issues that are happening out there. But that's another fundamental. You need to learn a way to find new information and, and integrate it into what you're doing, okay? So fundamental number five is learn the basics and practice them, okay? So um, constant learning is required. It's one of the fundamentals as well. And so we'll put it all together for you just a little bit. Um, it's a beautiful concept. This is an analog here of putting all of our security things together, making them all work. Just wait for it. This is, this is so satisfying here, right? <laughs> So when it's all said and done, and it's just going to loop now, I think, or, or no, I actually didn't have it loop. But when it's all said and done, this is how security is going to be. You're going to continue to deal with it because somebody in the organization messed up. You're going to continue to deal with it because you forgot to put that configuration, configuration in the way that you're supposed to. And I'll tell you, there's not a lot of times within the security realm that there's a lot of satisfaction and just running out of the office going, Yahoo. Okay? And if you're in that career, or if you're in this career for that, you're in the wrong career. But every once in a while it does happen. I mean, we had a really recent experience uh, where there was a compromise on one of the machines within the state uh, that we were involved with. I won't give you a lot of details about it, but uh, there is a lot of Yahoo when you crack open some issue that has perplexed so many other people, and then you finally just, you, you make that one little I don't know, Jason's shaking his head, he knows what I'm talking about, but you make that one little leap and then you figure out this really cool piece of malware that I've got a copy of if anybody would like now, and, and that it helps you distribute all kinds of cool stuff via a web, uh, a web vulnerability, uh, one that we haven't even seen before. Very cool stuff, it's all deep encoded stuff, so when the, the, the text is coming across and being put into your browser, uh, it's not plain text, it's all encoded, and then your, your browser decodes it. Really cool stuff. If anybody wants a copy, I'll send it out. That, that I can send out. Um, but there's not a lot of satisfaction until you have a lot of these fundamentals and skills in place, and then you do cool things like that. But to wrap it all up, you need to have good paranoid security-minded people. You need to be a paranoid person uh, so that when you see faults on your network, and such as the, the case that I made earlier, that you automatically jump to the paranoia conclusion. The database server's down. Oh crap, why is the database server down? Is it because Bob took it down for maintenance or is it because somebody dumped the tables a hundred times and it just crashed it or whatever, okay? But having good paranoid security people, not just yourself but with the systems administrators that you're working with, the DBAs you're working with, and any and other people, any and all of the other people that work with information technology within the organizations that you work for need to be good security-minded people. How do we get that? I should have put that as a slide in here as well. I won't ask the question more than just to say, 
you need to teach these people what it means to have a security-minded outlook on what they're doing. The system administrators are not going to just magically decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to always use a hardening guide when I install this new server. I'm not going to leave all the NetBIOS ports open, even though that's not much of an issue these days with the latest version of Windows, but I'm not going to leave Telnet or SSH open up to the world, those kinds of things, okay? Tools, you need good tools that manage, to help you manage the threats that you're seeing. And the tools, if you want to just put a little equal equal sign in there, tools equals visibility. You need to be able to see what's going on. And if you don't have the good tools to do that, you're gonna be failing. Okay, a baseline to work from and a scope to be effective in. Having a baseline and understanding where you're at and having a plan to move forward is important, but also having a scope so that you can actually be effective is key as well. Because if your scope is this, you're, never, you're gonna be a mile wide and less than an inch deep. If your scope is pretty refined, you're gonna be very effective at what you're doing. So make sure that the scope is defined and that if somebody thinks it's this and that's your boss, help them understand that, you know what, I can do really well right here, and these other things either we need more dudes for, or dudettes, sorry, I didn't mean to be sexist about it. We need more people to do these things, or some of these things aren't going to be as effective. Okay, um, let's see, skills to help you do a better job. Um, that's probably one of the most important security fundamentals, make sure that you're doing, a, that you have the skills in order to do a good job. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my presentation except for you get to see a really cool white slide. So, thanks. And if you have any questions, uh, most of you know where to find me and such.